Hi, and welcome to the first ever Give Me Five podcast from the ASD Tech Teams. The purpose of these Give Me Five podcasts are going to be talking about, to give you five tech integration topics in less than five minutes. It's a good thing I talk fast. So the, the subject of this very first Give Me Five is going to be back channel communication. So before we can start giving you tools about back channel communication, you have to understand what it is. Basically, back channel communication is all that discussion that takes place during a lecture, a video, a presentation, etc., by the students not by the main person, like not by the teacher or whoever's giving the presentation. This is the stuff that happens in the background. So it's like background, back channel communication. It's a great way for students to communicate and collaborate about a topic or a question or a discussion non-verbally. With this, I think it's very important that you model responsible ways to back channel chat. Obviously, you make sure they're on topic, make sure that they're using proper punctuation and whatnot, but also it's making sure they're doing it appropriately. You want them to be paying attention to the video lecture presentation the back channel should supplement that maybe go above and beyond for some higher level thinking or to reteach or request or to question what was taught okay um, also I would think about how often and when you do it obviously at the primary level I would only have a back channel open for a couple minutes and I would visit that back channel and model with my students what's appropriate what's great what did we like about this how can we learn from this how can we use this effectively at the middle and high school levels you could definitely stretch that time out and use it but again um, just because they're older doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna use it appropriately so make sure that you're doing lots of modeling and discussing about how you can use this tool effectively so like I said earlier um, the purpose of these give me five podcasts is to give you five quick tools in five minutes uh, I'm gonna run out of time here because we're almost at two minutes already so like I said it's a good thing I talk fast the very first tool I want to show you is called primarywall.com. When you go to the first page, you can just hit create wall and this is what will pop up. If you do sign up for a username that gives you the ability to um, give a wall a password, also to create users and whatnot, but if you're just going to use it for a quick shot, um, for just general brainstorming, things like that, this is what it looks like. It's a definitely a very primary look. You just simply hit add note um, and you can post a topic or a question. So I'm just going to post a question here and I'm going to put my name and hit post me. My students would see that if they have access to this website right here and then they can go ahead and add notes to enter it. You can move notes around um, and whatnot. So pretty cool, pretty simple. Another one very similar is corkboard me. Um, it's corkboard.me. Again, you create a corkboard, it'll feed you this website. You just have to put this someplace where students can access it, either writing it on the board, posting it on my big campus, putting it on your website. By clicking anywhere on the board, you can create a note and you can just post information, okay? Um, you can minimize, you can zoom in, zoom out. You have quite a large space if you want to. And again, anyone at any time can click and create multiple notes, posting questions, things like that. So again, this might have more of a primary use as well as a collaborative use. You could have this as a help desk for students. If they have a question, they could post something where another student can then respond to it, okay? If you want something a little bit more um, of a group writing experience, you can use typewith.me. Basically, this is an active live document. Right now, I'm the only user. That's why you can see this person with the one next to it. But basically, this is a live document I can type. And again, this is called typewithme, typewith.me. And you can see how it highlights my typing blue. If someone else would join this, their color would be, a, their, their typing would be a different color. Um, you can max out on users of this. I think it's around 18 you really don't want that many users. Um, the more users, the more frustrated your kids will get. This would be great for group collaboration. Maybe you have three or four students at attached to each one of these um, URLs so that they can do some group collaboration. It's a really neat tool. It teaches them to work um, together because they'll get frustrated if they're typing over each other's thoughts. And um, it's, it's, it's a great way to, to teach and responsible collaboration. The, the, the fourth tool I want to show you is called Today's Meet. Basically, you name your room. You can choose how long you want it to be open. Create your room. Type in your name. Hit join. And then you can type in any message you want. Hit say. The message will show up over here with your name. And it will be a scrolling, um, basically, of messages. As a teacher, you could post a question. And then students would, would be able to respond to that. Maybe during a video, you could post a quick question about something they just saw. Okay. Last but not least, the last tool I want to show you is simply My Big Campus. If you have a My Big Campus group, if you click on discussions, you can add a discussion, you can title it. This is obviously much more structured than any of the other sites I showed you, um, but students could have a back channel chat within that discussion board. 
So I'm at four minutes and 55 seconds. I kept it under five minutes. I hope you enjoyed this Give Me Five podcast. Have a great day.